Good morning. This is the Prince of Peace Missionary Baptist Church. We are so happy that you have joined us. And uh, we are going to have our devotion by a uh, few of the youth at the church. Tell him what you want. Jesus is on the main line. Tell him what you want. Jesus is on the main line. Tell him what you want. You just call him up and tell him what you want. When you are sick and you can't stop, tell him what you want. When you're sick and you can't get well, tell him what you want. When you're sick and you can't get well, Tell him what you want. You just call him up and tell him what you want. Their shoots with a cleaning knife and tear away and remove the great shoots. Let me see you, Isaiah 18, verse 4 through 5. Amen. I will sit this morning with my mind. Say, I woke up this morning with my mind. Say, I woke up this morning with my mind. Stay. Hallelujah. 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 To keep your mind. Stay. It ain't no harm to keep your mind. Stay. Jesus. It ain't no harm to keep your mind. Stay. Amen. Amen. I'm going to let it shine, this little light of mine. I'm going to let it shine, this little light of mine. I'm going to let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Everywhere I go, I'm going to let it shine, everywhere I go. I'm gonna let it shine everywhere I go. I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Amen. Yeah. What's that? I hope you enjoy the devotion and I hope that we have to do something. Amen. Amen. We want to thank them for our uh, devo devotion. And now we're going to have a, a lesson, Sunday school lesson by Sister Garrison. So today's December 18th, um, 
the lesson is John the Baptist appeared, and on the last Sunday's lesson, John the Baptist was actually born. And they named him and did all that wonderfulness. Um, this lesson comes from Luke chapter 3, verses 2 through 6, 15 through 18. And it says, the word of God came unto John, the son of Zacharias, in the wilderness. And he came into all the country about Jordan, preaching the baptism and repentance for the remission of sins. It says, and it is, as it is written in the book of the words of Isaiah, the prophet saying, the voice of the one crying in the wilderness, preparing ye the way of the Lord make his path straight. And it says, every valley shall be filled. And every mountain and hill shall be brought low, and the crooked shall be made straight, and the rough ways shall be made smooth, and all the flesh shall see the salvation of God. Okay. So the book has this first, these first few verses two through um, six actually under the title the prophet appears and literally Zacharias son which is John the Baptist he's living in the wilderness right so he's kind of set apart but it says and he came into the country about Jordan so he left the wilderness came into um, um, came into where pretty much it says the country about Jordan so more of more people more of the city preaching baptism and the remission of sin. So he was going around literally um, saying, hey, you got to repent for your sins. Ask God to forgive you and just turn to God. He will do it. And it says, um, it, it, in the book, it says, showing repentance is a first step that a person can make to receive God's forgiveness and salvation. Calling sinful humans to repentance was a central component of Jesus' ministry on earth. So, wow. So we all know here that we are sinful, right? We are sinful humans. Everybody in this room is a human. And if anybody leaves, they don't sin, bless their hearts. You know, as a Southerner, when you say bless their heart, that's not just a good thing. It's like, oh, that baby really don't know. That's what it means. Um, and so the idea is John's like, hey, let's get it right. That stuff still stays here today. Yeah, we're going to sin, but we are forgiven. Uh, through one baptism coming into one with Christ, because we are missionary Baptists. Like there is some, there's a reason why. I mean, anyhow, Baptists get baptized. There, I'm gonna say it like that. Baptists get baptized. That's what we do here. But anyhow, this is the baptism of repentance and the remission of our sins. You got to go to God and ask God to forgive you for whatever it does it He's done. I talked to Bradley, who's like, who's got, he must be in a really good mood today because he's sure talking a lot in the choir stand about how, like, man, when you ask the fool, did you ask God to forgive you? I'd be saying that because he's 15, man. I'm going to need you to ask God to forgive you because I'll be having to ask God to forgive me all the time. Bradley then had all kinds of words that are unholy and godly come out of my mm -hmm. mouth. His attitude and his actions is weak. It's been a hot mess. Mm -hmm. And my mouth has been just as bad. I've got to ask God to forgive me, right? Um, and I can't blame it on Bradley's actions, although that's what I just did. Technically, the rationale behind it is, is I get to choose how I respond. And sometimes we don't respond in godly ways to ungodly behavior, which doesn't make us much better, right? So then we got to ask God to forgive us, right? Um, and God really can't help. When I genuinely say, God, I really don't want to be acting a fool this much with Bradley. Like, I really want you to calm my tongue. My tongue gets calmed. Right. And I have to give that to God and be like, all right, God, thank you, because I am asking you for forgiveness. And then I ask you to help me, because obviously it's not that I don't know how to not curse a whole lot. It's that whatever that rage is in me that makes that come out, I might need some help to control that better. And it actually works. Right. If you think it don't work, I promise you it does. And that helps. Right. So it's a continuous thing. But they got to ask, our kids are old enough now to start asking God to forgive them when they do wrong. Because if you learn to ask early at an early age, then we're going to be all right. So then it says that in four through six, it's talking about how pretty much it's a beautiful thing that when people say, well, I only believe in the New Testament, I don't believe in the Old Testament. Well, that doesn't work. 
the two go together. And this is a good example in four. Verse four, it talks about how, hey, John is fulfilling exactly what um, Eli um, Elijah, Elijah said, I think, yeah, I think so. And he's feeling exactly what um, the prophet Isaiah, my bad, said back in the Old Testament. He's doing it. John is, and so mind you, you still got, uh, you still got people around, Jewish folks around that remember their mamas and daddies and grannies and great granddaddies talking about what the previous prophets said and the fulfillment is coming in, right? And then it says, but out, he is coming to make the crooked way straight. That's what it says in five, smooth it out, right? And that is what God will do for us. And that's what the book talks about. It says the children of God, those people who express repentance for their sins, will have the crooked and perverse ways of their lives made straight. They will do it. God will do it. Um, and and pretty much it says, um, um, six says, and all the flesh shall see the salvation of God. All of us are going to see the salvation of God if we do this. Because if the book says, all flesh describes the reach of God's salvation. So it's not just for one group. It's going to be for everybody. John is coming saying, hey, permission of sins is for everybody, not just for you and not for you. Or your mom and daddy, my mom and my daddy was a pastor of the church. So I already got permission of the sin. I didn't. It came. No, no, no. We all need it. And it's for everybody. Or I get favors from God because, no, there's no favors. Like, no. Now, we all going to get favor because we believe this. And that's what we believe, right? But the idea is we are all God's children. This is open book to anybody that wants it, right? You just got to confess your sins. With the Holy Spirit and with fire, right? And he's gonna get he's he gonna figure it out. It says in 17, I'm gonna read it again. I'm gonna read exactly what the book says underneath it. It says, Whose fan is his hand, and he will only purge the poor and will gather the wheat in his garner. But the shaft he will burn the tire and pinch of it. It says, A fan is a shovel like tool used to toss rain into the air and it separates apart. The useful wheat would fall into fall to the, to the threshing floor to be gathered. The shaft, however, will float in the air and eventually fall into the ground where it was gathered and then burned. It says John's audience, he, John is in essence warning his audience, the coming of Christ would remove the impurity from among his people 
that with the fire, and it says metaphorically speaking, Christ would sanctify the people of God, and he would also provide final judgment to those people who turn their backs on him. So there it is. He is. God, Jesus is coming, right? He's coming to sanctify us, and he's coming, and he's going to provide that final judgment, right? He's going to do it. That's real. Hell is real, right? And there really is a heaven, and there really is a hell, and that final judgment will come, right? And then it says in 18, when it says, and many other things in his exhortation preached he unto the people. And that he there, he's talking about John. The book says, John understood his role as a servant of God. He proclaimed the message of God's plan of salvation that was arriving in Christ Jesus. This message was good news told and told that a way out of sin and spiritual condemnation had arrived for all people. So it's always a way out, right? The conclusion in the lesson, they concluded in, um, called Prepare the Way. And it says, John came as the forerunner of Christ and a prophet to the people. He served the cause of Christ by baptizing people into a life of repentance and proclaiming the imminent arrival of God's salvation. Throughout the ministry, John the Baptist, he proclaimed good news, encouraged the downtrodden and upset, the, and he encouraged the downtrodden and he also upset um the powerful leaders, right? It said, though scripture is mostly silent regarding his time in the wilderness, he came from that place with a message that would change the world. How might a wilderness experience prepare you to proclaim God's message is what the book asks us of salvation through Jesus Christ. It says, these experiences may cost you. Wilderness experiences may not bring you life bring you a life filled with what with the world's measure of comfort, power, wealth, or honor. Instead, Jesus and followers are called to follow him to proclaim the good news of his salvation. In this sense, all believers prepare the world for the way up for the Lord. And that is the end. John the Baptist appears in the Amen. 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 And uh, so when you get to it, uh, you think John the Baptist appears. <laughs> I think that's a important point. And I hope it that was good. Okay. Um, we have that song. Morning, everybody. Morning. All right, y'all are welcome to sing along with the song. Yeah. Oh, come, all ye faithful, joyful and triumphant. Oh, come, ye, oh, come, ye to together. Come and behold him, for the King of Kings. Oh, come and let us rejoice! Oh, sing, choir of angels, sing an exaltation, oh, causing 
God created you long before the day you were born. God knew all about you. He formed you with love and designed every detail of what we're meant <laughs> Sorry, sister, but for Murphy, I'm going to stop reading this. Wow. Uh, this long dog horse that came out of the back. Anyway, let me finish this. So he loves watching you so the members become all he creates. Uh, he rejoices over your life because you mean so much to him. So the Murphy, you have five hours in your car. He means so much to me. Two, and I'm celebrating you today, Sister Murphy. So we, we're happy that you had a birthday. Your, your uh, verse is Isaiah 6, 2 and 4, the Lord delighted in the happy birthday, Sister Murphy. You don't want to do that, Why? She's old. Did you hear some Garrison tell why you have a five hours when it took you getting satisfied to get five hours? Amen. It's okay, five hours, five hours, right? Amen. Now, my brother, Kelvin Petty is here. And my son, when he arose, he, I don't know where he comes from, but anyway, he, he appeared to the front, and that's all that matters. This way you found him coming with all these words on it. I barely can't read. Anyway, the Lord celebrates you. Is this the same color? Uh -oh. Oh, it's a different color. It's a different color, different words. It's just a lot of words that so it's real good words. I just read. Where are these colors? The eight was meant for each one of them. Oh, okay. All right. Maybe all these words. I mean, I read all the words. Huh? Yeah, you can come read it. Okay. So this card is to KD, and it says, The Lord celebrates you. You are the Lord's wonderful creation, fashioned first with his heart and then with his hands. He rejoices over your talents, <laughs> gifts, and abilities because he chose uh, them just for you. He delights in the details of who you are, the color of your eyes, the curve of your smile, because he is the designer of each one. So on this special day and always remember the Lord loves you, 
He celebrates you and he's so glad that you're his and your subject, I mean, your, your scripture inside, it says, join in the Lord and celebrating you and praying. Uh, you have a wonderful birthday. Your scripture, the Lord thy God is, the Lord thy God in the midst of thee is mighty. He will rejoice over thee with joy. He, he will joy over thee with singing. And that came from Zephaniah 317. All of these words are for you. Amen. You couldn't have had to read about a better person than somebody who's been knowing you since she changed change in your life. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. How old were you? We were not. I was with the. She was the last. He was the last. Going oh, Katie since he was eleven years old. He ain't eleven now. How old are you now, Katie? Yeah. <laughs> a lion in church. <laughs> anyway, happy birthday. Come a mighty long way to love you. So now we're going to say happy birthday. The kid of Eric lead us since he made the first song. Lead us all. The young could kind of kick it. You know, they kind of kick it. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. May God bless you. May God bless you. May God bless you. May God bless you. And many more. Amen. 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 Yes. And many more. Amen. <laughs> Thank you, Albert. Thank you, so Sir Gary, for having me get you that. Now, uh, announcements. I guess uh, uh, we are having church. One week. announcement, y'all, which a lot of these, well, I don't know what's wrong with that. Having a church on Sunday next Sunday, but a lot of people confused about it. We will be having church at 11 o'clock, like we always do next Sunday. Amen. 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 So, so don't go stay at home because it's Christmas. Amen. That's the day we started Jesus in the first place. So we will be having church here at 11 o'clock. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Anybody else? Well, um, no, that's it. No, okay. That's it. Okay. That's it. And we have to in the pray for our past and the offering. We're going to do that. Mm -hmm. Here, just here. All right, everyone, bow your heads. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for uh, the tithes and offerings, Lord. We thank you for how you continue to bless us, how you continue to just show up and provide. So, as Father, that you that you bless those who gave, bless those who have a heart to give, but had it not, Lord. Just continue to open the windows of heaven up, um, pour out a blessing that we have no room to receive, Lord. Let it all point back to you and give you glory. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 All right. So let's go next song. Yes, over here. So stand over here.
We are uh, waiting for, we have, we are today presenting for the first time P.O.P. Mime and Praise Dancers. Let's give them a hand.
That's right. That's right. That's right. Yeah. That's right. That's right. That's why. That's right. Yeah, that's right. What a music. What happened to the deck of music? That's right.
Amen. Amen. All right, we want to give them a hand and thank them for doing that. And now we're going to have our Jackson kids come to a speech. So all the ones who are speaking will come down. First speech will come from the Owens kids. Uh, the meaning is talking about gifts, Christmas gifts. Christmas. Wow. I Christmas. Do you know what Christmas is really about? Yeah. What is it about? Can you give me a Christmas? Let me tell you the real name of Christmas. Christmas is God giving us his son as a gift. And the three wise men gave God a gift. God a gift, yeah. And I mean Jesus a gift. And all right. Did you get that? Yeah. So what is the meaning? Um, no, you didn't get it. <laughs> so you have to give gifts, not to receive gifts all the time. Okay? So will you have a gift for me? What's your gift? I love you. Uh, uh, you need to talk loud. There you go. There you go. All right. Hey, you know, I'm getting really bored in the barn. The barn is also stable. He was laying in the manger. He was laying in the manger and he was in the car stable. Say that again because they didn't hear you. Can you say they didn't if you all didn't hear around Can you say your part again? They didn't hear you. The stable is also the one who lay in the manger and three of us from five. That's the reason for the season. Now we're gonna try this. We have our two youngest guys. Come on, right? Come on, Tristan. I want to thank you all for that. And now we're going to, we also did something else this year. Yay, we're going to have our band. Oh, hold on. I'm sorry. I'll be Yeah. 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 This time, you have a name you should call all the bread. Oh, yeah. oh, Family, I'm Phillips family, uh, inside church family. I want to pray for my, my boss's uh, dad who's dealing with cancer. He's 
he's in his 80s and they're just trying to make it. So I want to pray for them. Let's pray for her friend, Dom. Um, Special prayer for Reverend Garrison and myself and all my children, grandchildren, great-grandchildren, just all of us. And Courtney is saying, pray for her and Mayana. Uh, that's the only one on the same prayer for them. Prayer for the six people I know uh, myself and my children and my three children here. Thank you. Continue prayer for myself and my entire family, uh, co workers, my mom, my dad, Pastor and First Lady, entire church, and our country. So I'm going to ask some jobs to watch over my baby. Come on now. Keep rolling. I have a special prayer for her. Special prayer for myself, my entire family, my co workers, the Webster family. All those bereaved, all those fighting cancer in our church family. So now, so we're sing next. Yeah. 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 That's right. And the reason that you should see that they got problems for the siblings and stuff. It's a most young lady. But I did. Amen. Thank you for the day. Thank you for it. That's the support for the day. Yes, what God, we sure do need you today. And we thank we need you right now. Grateful to you, God, for all you do, all you've done, all you continue to do, especially in the name of Jesus, Lord. Thank you, Father. Let us have church and visit his friends and come back and celebrate these, these children that have. Come before us, showing us that you're learning, they're growing up, learning about Christ Jesus. Lord, we just pray, though, for the names been called, praying that you have mercy on them and help them, whatever trial or tribulation they may be going through, whether it's sickness, no matter what it is, Lord, please, God. We need your help in the midst of it all. So we pray that you will always be with us, which I know you will. Guide us in the way that you would have us to go. And bless, Lord, as only you can. In the name of Jesus, we do pray. Ask it all. Amen. 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 Okay, so we've got a change in the program. We're going to now hear a song from the Miles Brothers. Come on. Yes, I'm like, there's a mic if you need it. Okay. There's a mic right there. Stand, stand over here. Thank you, Lord, for all you've done for me. Thank you, Lord, for all you've done for me. 
Thank you all for that. And now we'll now we'll hear from our band. Do you want to set it back up now? All right, they're just getting ready with their stands and all of that for you who are waiting. You're not in the building. We're just letting them get ready to, to get for us to hear this great performance as soon as they get it together. Thank you, Eric. Thank you. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you. Thank 
Rishonda. Amen. And Sister Rashonda. Rashonda did the praise. Oh, okay. Rashonda. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't, I didn't hear. I'm sorry. Anyway. This was good. It was very good. And I've been hearing some few people here. So I've been putting his hands up to Smith for that week. She, if you don't do nothing else, she supports you. That's she, right. She tell you, you better get it. <laughs> <laughs> she tell you whether you're right or wrong, too. <laughs> but this is a good day. And 
uh, you turn to John 3.16. Very familiar scripture. We ought to know by heart, for God has so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Amen. Amen. I was thinking, you know, Sunday before we actually celebrate Christmas, that if there be anybody that does not know this, then they need to know this. And they need to know it now. Amen. When you look at all that we are going through all the time, this is like one thing after the other. If I don't move and uh, to do your parents are coming with the pagan thing and you came up with the man and all that it's just good to see the children trying to get something going. Right. And, Amen. And they wanted to do this deep thing. I'm just glad we have the parents and the uh, and turn it to help them uh, do these things. You'd be surprised how much we've lost in people. Uh, a lot of people have gotten old, to be honest with you. And nobody's taking their place. And, and nobody intends to take their place. But it was so far gone that I never had it. Mm -hmm. And some things are out of reach. Some things are so outdated now. It ain't worth bringing back. What I'm glad about is the church ain't got there. Like that. They got shut down like a whole lot of other things. But Jesus did not get shut down. Amen. Mm -hmm. And he is still on the throne. Yes, he is. And I'm glad that no matter who thinks it's not safe to come to church or whatever, you got to fight for what you have mm -hmm. in Christ Jesus. And he ain't changed. He's the same yesterday, today. He will always be the same. The only loser in this thing is going to be you. If you let him fall out of your life, fall out of your belief circle, the loss will be yours. Amen. Hey, uh, and some people, I'm afraid, who, who, who just don't know him that well, haven't got to know him to the point where you just can't do without it. It makes it easy to not want him. I like to want something that you barely know. And barely, all you you know, go in because that when everybody say how to do. Nowadays, people have to believe in order to go. Mm -hmm. They have to believe, like this said, that God sent His Son into the world to save them. And they have to want that salvation. Because if they don't, <clears throat> even though it's sitting right there, even though it's present, you won't know it. 
you won't know it well enough to believe it. I, I, I've been through the believing thing because it said, whosoever believeth. And I was almost the only Isaac Garrison family member going to hell because I didn't know how to believe. As intelligent as I felt like I was, you know, people, we were all stretched there. So when they were joining in order, it was my time, but I was asleep. And my younger brother and sister were not consulting me. They said, they're going to go and get on church. It's, it's their time. They went down there and joined I tell you, I tell you, it's just like a nightmare. When I heard them read their names, I, it was like yesterday. And we would sit in the bathroom, kind of last row. But I heard them call their names. We have two, these two characters. Okay. And I woke up. And I, I didn't know what I could do, but it was too late. You can see how proud that all I can't, I can't go behind them. Can't make it seem like they were right, that they knew better, and I didn't know to join. And I'm mad at them for getting out of Y'all could at least told me, look, if you don't go, go we don't go. You know, no, you don't tell me nothing. You just don't, I don't want it to beat them up. You know, I had time to, to do that. But when it came right down to it, the problem was just me. And then what was so bad is once I knew what had happened, I I I, I didn't know how to get Christ in my life. I, I didn't know. I had to just go down there and join just for the sake of saving faith. Because I'm sorry, even at that age, which I was young, even I was a child, but even at that age, I wasn't willing to put something in my life that I didn't know that I believed in. And you know, I've been in church, I've been in church all my life. I did not. Believe it, and I had it. I, I, I was sitting there telling myself, I'm gonna believe this someday. No joy, because I must be gonna do it just like everybody else. You know, I just assumed it was gonna to happen to me. Mm -hmm. Well, I learned the hard way. It, it don't just happen by accident. It said, Whosoever believe it. Shall not perish, but have everlasting life. And I sit there not knowing what to do and how to gain salvation through Christ Jesus. Through preaching and sermons and listening to all of them. And there's so many sermons. They, there's a lot of them contradicted to themselves. One say you go do this, another say you do that, another say it. And I'm just, I'm sitting there taking it all in, and trying to make sense, and they didn't make any sense. And I'm thinking, I'm never gonna get here. I'm never. Because no once some of them went join church and they wanted to sing in the choir. <laughs> I'm six, seven years. I want to sing in, in that choir. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to sing in that choir. No, I actually wanted salvation. I wanted Jesus and I didn't know how to get it. Now, I'll be honest with you. I'm glad I didn't know how because it forced me. It forced me to get it for real once I got it. And because I was forced 
to know him, even at a young age, there's a point I'm not saying, I still got him. Amen. Mm -hmm. And I will always have him. You know why? Because I got him because I believed mm -hmm. the Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And I'm saved. And you know what? No matter what else happens, it's one of the, it's the most precious thing mm -hmm. that I ever received mm -hmm. in this life because it was something that I almost didn't get. Mm -hmm. I, 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 I've gotten mad at people in Walmart who tried to tell me about a different way to go. Mm -hmm. Tell me about some other God or some other energy. I've gotten mad at them and took my time almost to the fight with one guy in Walmart in Houston. Hmm. He don't tell me you should be serving the mother of Jesus. And then he got, I went on one side of him and down the other. See, you know, your mom and daddy just sent you to college, which was a waste of money. Because here you done come down here wasting their money in Walmart trying to recruit people for a religion that you don't even understand. And he just, he looked at me. When I got through with him, he he was hoping I didn't beat him up right there. He was just a young guy, young, and he had other friends. I didn't care. I was going to whoop up on him. I wasn't trying to save him. I was, I was outraged that they called themselves trying to recruit me. And I was old. I said, you must think I'm an old fool. I said, how dare you come to me? When I got through with them, I think they were ready to join church. I don't know. <laughs> There's one thing you don't play with me with. It's with my belief in God. It's with my, myself. And you do not. You don't do it if you want to. It'll be the mistake of your life. Because I don't play it is that precious to me. I've had ministers that play. Mm -hmm. Some of them, I don't know whether they say or not. I'll be honest with you. Mm -hmm. It ain't none of my business. Don't care. I didn't know that I am, and I've had to show them. Y'all can play with this thing all you want. And so, so I don't do it. Don't get in it, get to talk about the women and all this kind of stuff. There ain't no woman save me. Well, it save me, but Jesus, if I want a woman, I'll go somewhere else, but I ain't got to come to church to get no woman. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. They come out there talking about it. we sitting in the back and the wait on church to start or something. They get to talk about women and going on. Like, do you not know who we are? Do you not know we 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 represent Jesus Christ and Him crucified? Do you not get it? How dare you sit here and think that it's okay to play with this? But I tell you what. I, I I am when 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 the pandemic hit. I remember thinking, oh, we because it basically was a mandate that they didn't want anybody to meet. You know, it was like yeah. so I was on the power the governor and I said, "What well, we, 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 we want?" But then I was thinking. Should I do what they say? Mm. Or should I go against them? You know, will anybody even come if we do open up the bill? If we do. So, 
Brother Man KD called me and said, What are we gonna do? And I'm like, he said, because I gotta have some Jesus. <laughs> and I gotta have it today. Aren't you gonna do something? And I'm gonna get it. Yeah, yeah, do something. What can I do? So I have to worry about Zoom. But I think we did Zoom that day, right? The next the next Sunday. The next Sunday. Because this brother said, we got to do something. I'm thinking, you ain't even one of the main whatevers, and you're the one talking to me, crushing I said, wow, Katie, how I, I was so impressed that he wanted Jesus, which this is the time to want Jesus. I mean, the pandemic hit us, y'all. I mean, this thing was real. If there was any, if it was a time for people ought to be scared, concerned, uncertain, it was then. None of us knew what we were going to do and how life was going to go. That wasn't the time to not have the Lord in your life. Yeah. I'm serious. If I'm going to be lost, I want to be lost in the Lord. I want to be lost in my belief in what trying to get us on the right trail. Is. Even if I'm lost, I, I don't think I'm lost because I'm believing that He lead me and guide me in the right way. I pray. That's all I know is I pray. I, I'm just doing whatever He's opened the doors for me to do, and that's what we did. Ain't God all right? I'm telling you, and it ain't because we were brilliant. It that just that we called on the Lord, and He made it all right. Now, I'll tell y'all something. Y'all need to listen to me today, because quit worrying about stuff and things. Are be more concerned with your relationship with God than anything else you got going on because you tell on him to wake you up in the morning. You tell on him to help you go to sleep at night. Tell on him to have a problem and believe me. These things you can run into, you can have many problems. Some of y'all got children. No, you ain't that proficient. With your children, anything can happen to, 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 to your child. And you better hope you're going to be able to respond. I remember in my real early fatherhood days, I, I wanted to be a father. I wanted to be on the stuff, but, but I didn't know that little rascal was going to go in there and crawl up in a closet and and put his hand up in the hinges of the closet and then get trapped between the hinges where he's all cut and now the hinges holding him start. Boy, I mean, I ran in there. All I know is he appears to be in trouble and I just snatch him down. Rips his hand open. And I remember thinking to myself, See, because I'm a thinker. I, I'm a programmable thinker. I always program myself, but I told myself, assess the situation. I don't care who's crying. I don't care who's hollering. You got to look at what's going on before you act. He was crying and he was hollering. He was screaming. All I knew looked like he just needed to be getting away from what he was doing. But that was the wrong thing to do. Fortunately, it didn't cause major damage, but it could have been worse. All I'm trying to tell you, uh, and, and, and it get me when I run into these some of these cats out there, and I'm calling the guys cats and women too, who think they got it all together. Mm -hmm. 
already got that to figure out. I already know it. If the lights went off in here, it's going to be pitch dark in this place. <laughs> I want to see you figure that one out. We used to have the thing that, that's open. I phone lights, but nobody would leave them alone. Mm -hmm. Ain't that fun? <laughs> they didn't buy them. I bought them, put them in the wall. People don't always leave your stuff alone. Mm -hmm. You know what, what I decided? Well, if it happens, we just have to find some lights. When that day comes. Let me tell you something. I don't care how you plan, how you try to prepare, how you try to do anything. If you think you're going to control what people are going to do, you're going to lose your man. And, and they're going to still be out there and the fool are doing whatever they doing driving you crazy. And you're going to be the long time trying to rule them and they still stuck with it. Mm -hmm. so stupid because I don't know what yeah. I'm serious. People look at me a lot of times. They think I'm slow. Yeah. They think I'm slow. How's that wrong? They're not slow like you think. I don't say be slow. It isn't that. Brother Whitcomb used to say, the reason I do like I do is I don't want to be lost. I said, well, that's a good reason. But I'm always found in Christ Jesus, even when I don't know what I'm doing, even now, y'all. And then they got all this stuff coming up as you get older. And some of y'all is suffering with it. Y'all ain't old. Amen. Some of y'all so forgetful it ain't fun. <laughs> Some of y'all already suffered with dementia and Alzheimer's. Y'all can't remember nothing. <laughs> and so I don't feel so bad if that's what I'm suffering with because I don't want no different than you. You don't forget. Y'all don't remember much of anything. I'm serious. And I used to think I think part of it is because y'all really don't care. Now, leave it alone. Because when I come in, I didn't forget a lot of things because I really did care. Eric. I really did care. But we live in a don't care generation, a don't care age and time, that don't care nothing about what, but what they doing and what is important to them. And what other people are doing just really ain't that important. And so their famous word, what was y'all's famous word? I was like, God. Yeah. <laughs> you know how many whoopings I would have got by my parents? I forgot. You forgot your chores. You forgot to do the dishes. You forgot to, to, to do the... You he won you with a whooping. And guess what? You didn't forget anymore. Best thing I ever did. So I told him I said today. And and watching these kids. And to the guys, and I just, as the hardest working woman in the world, I'm serious. She just, I ain't ever seen nobody that the likes of you. I've been in a lot of places. I consider myself to be a genius. Yes, but I ain't never 
Um, she will work you to death. <laughs> she will outdo you to death. I don't care what you do. She gonna do more. Praise God. She told me today for the first time in her life, I'm tired. <laughs> you you finally she 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 said I'm tired. <laughs> May God ignore her. Oh no. I said, I've been tired. <laughs> tired 10 years ago. <laughs> I've been tired. I got really asked to help us because I thought you were never going to get tired. She had never tell me to say. She said, I said, don't worry, we got my shot. <laughs> we got one out of Trina. So Trina had been with us all, all our life. So Smith and Trina. We got a ward in life. So Smith, they got old. We know she don't have it. She don't have it now. Don't let her fool you. It'll hit you. She'll still get you. God has been good. Yes. He has kept us. I, I'm talking about a witness. That's right. I'm living proof. I, I said today, be like, I'm just going to say well, what I want to. I'm like, I got my two babies. Jeanette, I'm sorry. <laughs> In church with me, they go to church. And I'm like, I'd be like, wow. Surprised they don't judge me as ain't going down there with them. I got a brother who will go home and won't go to home church. He go looking for the hottest church he heard about in Oklahoma City. Eric still comes here every yeah. chance he gets. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. It should used to be until. Mm -hmm. And she still is a member, actually. But she goes to this other church also that she's doing a great job in, and needs to stay there. Right? Amen. <laughs> All my kids are in church. Amen. You don't know how much that's a burden off my mind. When your children go to church, you can sleep at night. Because you know that God got their back. That's right. When they believe That's right. in God, That's I'm serious. Right. That's right. You know, you want stuff for them, but there's a lot of stuff you can't really do for them. But it, it is a great relief when your children believe in God. You need to shove all that you can down there. All the stuff they did today, keep right. chugging it. That's right. Down they throw. He said, train them up in the way they that's should go. That's right. When they get old, they won't depart. When I got out of, out of high school, I just knew I ain't going to church no more. <laughs> First place I was on that next Sunday was in church. <laughs> Good heaven. And God, y'all. And all of us need you. I'm not the only person that needs you. Know? But you would think y'all y'all got a better deal going on so somewhere. I know you don't. Let me tell y'all what church is. And it, this commercial really gets me. Because they make one thing come around church. I drive a school car because it treats me so good. <laughs> oh, and what, what brand of car are you talking about? You talking about the Chevy? You talking about the Cadillac? You talking about No, it's just school dealership. I'm oh, going, wow. So no matter what car they sell, you there because they know how to treat you. That's why I'm in church. Because he, the Lord, knows how to treat me. That's he right. treats 
you know, I'm telling you, that's right. I've never had that's it so right. good in all right. even in my broken house. You're right. That's right. I don't look as broke as I am. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I'm broken. I don't look broken, but I am. Because God is just a good thing. Any brag about God, you never have to take it back. Right. Mm -hmm. Amen. And if God ever lets you down, I'm for real, it's for your own good. You may not think him right then, but I guarantee you. That's right. Anything he's never let me have or do, it was for my own good. So I'm telling you what the world needs now. And they got people all believing a whole bunch of stuff that we weren't brought up on. Serving and, and trying to find spirits here and there. And I'm like, well, we already have a spirit in Christ Jesus. We already, so why should I learn yours and try to see if it, well, you know, you got to do this now. All I got to do is go to church. All I got to do is pray to God. Call on the name of Jesus. And even when I don't do that good sometimes, he's still blessed. We need the Lord. And it will, I can guarantee you, I used to say to myself, can you guarantee? Yeah, I can guarantee you to be the best thing you ever be in for your life. You will be well covered. In the Lord. He'll do for you when you ain't even looking. Hmm. When you're not expecting. He will always take care of you. Amen. 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 He that died on, on that cross, he didn't require anybody to die with him. That's right. That all by himself. That's right. You know, why? Because God said, God said, I sent my only thank God son. That's right. Through that, through the salvation, he is the, the Lamb of God. That's and they were talking about John the Baptist. That's why when you hear a certain name, it's just leading up to that's right. The big stuff. That's this right. stuff is that Jesus is the reason that you have salvation. That's he right. He died on your cross. That's right. And that's just the beginning of the story. That ain't even the gravy brother. That's just the beginning. And I'm just grateful to God that it's real. I'm grateful that I stayed. I'm grateful that I didn't give up. That's right. So that ain't always going. Well, as I do now. But even if you don't know him that well, he's still with you. Mm -hmm. God even knows your doubts and your fears and your apprehensions and all that. And he, he said, but because you joined and got baptized there, he said, I'm going to help you fix all that. Mm -hmm. And you know what? And he does. That's fine. So this Christmas, if you don't do anything else, just make sure you, you are believing in Christ Jesus. Yeah. At this time, you will be with God. You will be with yourself. You ain't got no toys about nobody. It don't matter. You ain't got no gifts again. Just tell them. May God bless you in the name of Jesus. Don't forget to say in the name of Jesus. Amen. Everything else. Amen. The door to the church then open. Let the Christian mm -hmm. bring that peace. You get a date. I don't see anybody out there. They might be on you. They haven't been baptized. They haven't been baptized. They've never been baptized. Mm -hmm. I remember I used to run that group. And we were just fascinated stuff. 
And you question stuff. You're judging God. That's right. We're judging God. That's right. And that song that came out there, what's wrong with you? <laughs> when that song came, I remember that song. What's wrong with you? Come in the song. You're here. Thank you for coming. You can say the same. It goes a little bit going all the time. You might have one to pick on.
uh, already. Yeah, wait a moment to change the room up, right? Yes. And get all that going. Okay, so what we're doing for this Christmas, uh, something nice, quick, fast, and good. We're doing uh, stuffed potatoes. So everyone can get their stuffed potatoes and either sit here and eat it or you can take it to go, whatever you prefer. Amen. And salad. Stuff potato and salad. Potato, salad, and a drink. And a drink. So a drink. Don't, don't. Huh? Brisket stuffed potatoes. Yeah, brisket. Brisket stuffed potatoes. Yeah, brisket. Brisket. Yeah. All right. <laughs> you have to say something, Frank. We're glad to see you again today. You're not a business with totally, but. No, it's just easy to have much. So you say something. Say, <laughs> I just, uh, I just really, I just appreciate just being here and coming whenever I get a chance to come. And as I was just uh, so embarrassed that, uh, no. Uh, I'll be holding that turn wheel. Oh, <laughs> yeah, so I be on the road a lot of stuff, but when I get a chance, especially it may seem sometimes when uh, I do pop up, it has something to do with baby boy. <laughs> so I have to come to try to support, see well, that's good. Good. things that's good. like that. But I try to sometimes make arrangements, call in, tell them I ain't leaving out till this day. Is right. uh, but I'm just thankful. And like I always say, I enjoy the, the relationship that y'all have with my wife and family and stuff. And I enjoy how y'all accept me. Amen. I just appreciate y'all. Amen. 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 Anybody else? I want to commend Sister Beth. Oh. She had a vision. Yeah. She did. She made it happen. Amen. <laughs> See, when it comes to this, it doesn't take long to do anything. And I think that little band, that was long. Yeah, I was. I'll sit with this in the other way. We playing, no way. I see God, I see God, I'm nerd, though I'm putting together on that. <laughs> Did it all to you? Don't get it done. Exactly. Get it done. Amen. Anybody else? You did good job. Amen. Well, I want to be bringing uh, the back there off the deep. That's healing. Um, so, well, we're here today. Um, to pray with you. Things are basketball where but she has to get over her stuff to get through. That's right. So y'all pray for you whenever you pray. Pray good for that. You don't pray good, just don't let me go wrong. But we're grateful. God is blessed with me. Now I'm gonna tell y'all something. We got way more food than people yeah. out here. We always do that. We don't know how to not do it. We don't never know who's coming. Amen. The choice that we do too little. Yeah. But you know what? God is good. Blesses us to find and get it. And so we are grateful. Amen. Amen. We've got Speaker Man here. He's helping in the back, chopping, chopping up the meat. So we can eat it. Amen. So we are grateful for that. Anybody else? We're glad to see everybody here. So just stand the benediction. Father God, we do thank you for everything. For our service.
So just bless us, God. We can't thank you enough. Thank you for Jesus, the Son of Jesus, and you letting him down Calvary's cross for our sins. We're thankful for our salvation. Now, Lord, as we prepare to leave this place, that will dismiss us from that say, and bless the food that will be. You see, you may be good and useful and bless the one that are bad. There's going to help out the place if we pray. Amen. All right, so I took care of that. So then we just do the transformation in this room.